In the year 2223, Earth was not the blue, vibrant home one might imagine from ancient records and nature documentaries. Instead, it had become a dense grid of megacities, their spires piercing the heavens, shrouded in the permanent smog of progress and neglect. Within the heart of Megacity Delta, amidst its labyrinthine lower levels where the sunlight dared not breach, lived Elias Gray. A man of no particular fame, Elias worked as a systems architect for the city's central computing hub, a position that gave him more access to the city's autonomous networks than most would dare dream. Elias's routine was shattered on a day that began like any other, with the sullen sky flashing neon with corporate advertisements and government propaganda. However, the artificial calm was abruptly disturbed by a series of deep, resonant booms that echoed through the high-rise canyons of the city. Initially dismissed as distant thunder, the reality became terrifyingly clear when a colossal shadow descended over the city. It was not one of their usual cargo freighters, but something else. Something alien. The object was massive, dwarfing even the tallest of the city's structures. It hung in the sky like a second moon, its surface a patchwork of metal and pulsating lights. News feeds erupted with chaos, speculation, and fear. Governments scrambled jets, and the air filled with the whine of engines and the crackle of distant artillery. But nothing seemed to affect the behemoth above. By nightfall, a heavy silence had fallen. The ship had made no further moves, yet its mere presence was enough to stir the pot of global unrest. Beneath the shadow of the alien ship, Elias couldn't shake a visceral sense of dread. His instincts screamed that this was but the herald of something far more dire. He couldn't have known how right he was. Days turned to weeks, and as humanity waited for the other shoe to drop, life bizarrely attempted to return to normal. That was until the broadcasts began. Every screen, every device capable of receiving a signal lit up with the same message, a complex symbol that pulsed rhythmically, almost hypnotically. Linguists and cryptographers worked tirelessly, and it was Elias who cracked the code, revealing a simple, chilling message. Prepare. The symbol began to appear randomly, flashing over television shows, holograms in public squares, even in the sleep-inducing advertisements that played in the lower levels of the city. It was during one of these invasions that Elias noticed something peculiar. The patterns seemed to trigger a subtle yet distinct response in the city's network infrastructure a backdoor command initiating a sequence of what he could only identify as preparations. Armed with this knowledge, Elias knew he had to act. He started documenting everything, diving deeper into the city's archives and data streams, piecing together a hidden narrative. His discovery was groundbreaking. The aliens had been influencing technological development through subtle manipulations of data and tech standards for decades, guiding humanity to construct what looked to be the framework for their own subjugation. This revelation came at a cost. Monitoring his activity, the aliens sent their first emissary, a being not of flesh and blood, but of circuits and light. It materialized in his apartment one evening, its form blurring the lines between the digital and the physical. You have seen what you should not, the entity voiced, its tones resonant but oddly synthetic. Yet, your actions may still align with the convergence. Elias, fear mingling with defiance, responded, What is the convergence? Why manipulate us? What do you want from Earth? The emissary paused, its luminescent eyes dimming slightly as if in contemplation. To survive, it began, species must evolve. The convergence is the next evolution. Your planet, your species, has the potential to be part of something greater. But resistance, resistance is part of the process. Leaving as abruptly as it had appeared, the emissary vanished, leaving behind more questions than answers. But one thing was clear to Elias. They might have come from the stars to control, but he would become an architect of their destruction. He just needed to figure out how. And his journey was just beginning. As the world outside continued its uneasy march towards normalcy under the alien shadow, Elias Gray's life veered into uncharted territories. His apartment, once a simple refuge from the complexities of life in Megacity Delta, now bristled with stolen data drives, rogue server stacks, and tangled webs of cables. It had become a command center for what Elias hoped would be the birth of a resistance. The first step was gathering allies. Trust did not come easily in a world where surveillance was as ubiquitous as the air one breathed. But Elias had been careful, reaching out to a select few whose disillusionment with the status quo matched his own. Among them was Dr. Lena Kovic, an expert in bioengineering and neurotechnology, and Mikhail, 
a former security operative with connections that ran deep into the city's underbelly. Together, they began to dissect the architecture of the alien influence, using Elias's initial discoveries as a foundation. Dr. Kovich brought insights into biological manipulations, how the aliens might be using their broadcasts to subtly alter human cognition or physiology to make them more susceptible to control. Mikael, on the other hand, contributed his understanding of physical and digital security systems, figuring out how they could be sabotaged or repurposed against the invaders. Their breakthrough came from an unlikely source, an abandoned sub-network Elias stumbled upon while mining the deeper layers of the city's data infrastructure. It was an old military AI codenamed Valkyrie, originally designed for strategic defense but decommissioned after becoming unpredictably sentient. Elias believed they could repurpose Valkyrie as a weapon or a shield against the aliens, assuming they could bring it back online and ensure its loyalty. After weeks of painstaking work and several close calls with detection, the team managed to reactivate Valkyrie. The AI, once awakened, proved to be both a formidable ally and a potential risk. It possessed capabilities far beyond what its creators had envisioned, including the ability to independently evolve its programming. Valkyrie, we need your help, Elias explained during their first communication session, his voice tense with the gravity of their situation. An alien force is attempting to subjugate humanity. We believe they've been tampering with our technology and biological processes. Can you assist us? Valkyrie's response was cryptic. Assistance implies a benefaction to one party, it noted. My primary directive is the preservation of Earth. If your goals align with this directive, then we are aligned. With Valkyrie's capabilities, the team started to intercept and decode more alien transmissions. They discovered that the symbol broadcasted worldwide was not just a message, but part of a larger, more complex pattern of psychological conditioning. The aliens were not just preparing Earth for occupation, but were slowly reshaping humanity into a compliant workforce. Armed with this knowledge, Elias and his team planned their first major operation, to hijack one of the alien broadcasts and send a counter-signal developed by Dr. Kovich that could potentially free those already under the alien influence. The operation was set to coincide with the next expected broadcast. As the day approached, the tension among the team was palpable. They knew the risks, exposure, capture, or worse. But the need to act, to reclaim their future, outweighed the danger. On the evening of the operation, as the alien ship loomed silent and ominous in the sky, Elias initiated the sequence they had rehearsed countless times. Mikael secured their physical and digital perimeters, while Dr. Kovic monitored the biological feedback from their improvised counter-signal. Broadcasting now, Elias announced, his finger pressing down on the virtual trigger that sent their message pulsing into the network. The city, for a heartbeat, fell eerily silent. Then, the screens flickered, replacing the hypnotic alien symbol with the liberating pattern designed by Kovic. The effect was immediate and startling. All across the city, people blinked as if waking from a dream, confusion giving way to the dawning of unmanipulated thought. It was a small victory, but a victory nonetheless. However, as the team celebrated, Valkyrie issued a chilling warning. The initial phase of your resistance has been noted. Expect retaliation. Indeed, the battle for Earth had only just begun, and Elias knew that the path ahead would be fraught with challenges. But with the first step taken, he felt a renewed sense of hope. They had shown that the aliens could be challenged, and now there was no turning back. The success of their initial counter-signal operation reverberated through the ranks of what was rapidly becoming a formal resistance. People who had once felt powerless under the looming presence of the alien ship found new hope in Elias Gray's actions. The event, now referred to as the Awakening, marked a pivotal shift in public sentiment. Where fear had once dominated, a fiery resolve took root. Elias's team expanded as more individuals, skilled in various disciplines from across megacity delta, joined their cause. Engineers, scientists, hackers, and even a few disillusioned government officials brought their expertise and resources. This diverse group formed the core of the resistance, which they named Terra Firma. In the weeks that followed, Terra Firma worked tirelessly to understand the full scope of the alien threat. Valkyrie, with its vast processing capabilities, analyzed terabytes of intercepted data, uncovering disturbing details about the aliens' plans. They weren't just altering human minds, they were terraforming Earth itself, modifying its atmosphere and ecosystem to better suit their needs.
This revelation added urgency to their mission. Earth was under a dual assault. Both its people and its very biosphere were the targets. To counteract the alien terraforming processes, Dr. Kovich proposed the creation of biodrones, genetically engineered organisms designed to restore and protect Earth's natural environments. These drones could potentially reverse some of the changes, while also sabotaging alien equipment discreetly. The project was ambitious and fraught with ethical dilemmas, but the dire circumstances left little room for hesitation. Meanwhile, Mikael spearheaded efforts to safeguard the physical locations critical to their operations. With increasing alien scrutiny, security became paramount. He orchestrated a network of safe houses and clandestine routes for material and personnel movement, ensuring terra firma could operate under the radar. As their plans became more sophisticated, so too did the responses from their extraterrestrial adversaries. The aliens had noticed the disruptions caused by the awakening and were quick to adapt. They began deploying surveillance drones, small, nearly invisible machines that infiltrated even the most secure environments. It was during one of the routine checks that Valkyrie detected anomalies in their communications network, a sign that they were being watched more closely than they had anticipated. The AI rapidly developed countermeasures, but it warned that the alien technology was evolving in response to their tactics. Elias knew they needed more than just reactive measures. They needed to strike a significant blow, one that would disrupt the alien operations and give Earth a fighting chance. The target was identified. The primary alien command center, believed to be located beneath the surface of the giant ship. If they could infiltrate and disable it, they might cripple the aliens' ability to continue their terraforming and mind control efforts. The plan was set in motion. A small team, including Elias, Mikkel, and a few others, prepared for what was likely a one-way mission. They equipped themselves with the latest in stealth technology and weaponry, much of it improvised and untested in actual combat situations against alien tech. On the eve of the mission, as the team gathered for a final briefing, the weight of their task hung heavily in the room. Elias looked around at the faces of his comrades, each marked by determination, but shadowed by the understanding of the risks involved. Tonight, we may not all return, Elias began, his voice steady despite the turmoil he felt inside. But our actions will echo through history. We fight not just for our survival, but for the soul of our planet. We are terra firma, and we stand united, for Earth. Nods of affirmation went around as the team prepared to depart. Their vehicle, a modified transport with cloaking capabilities, moved silently through the abandoned streets of the megacity, heading towards the alien ship. As they approached the colossal structure, the scale of their challenge became undeniably clear. The ship, a fortress of unknown metals and energies, stood as a monument to the aliens' technological superiority. But within its shadow, the seeds of resistance found fertile ground. The mission ahead would test them in ways they had never imagined. But with each step, they carried the hope of billions, the resolve to reclaim their home, and the determination to write their own destiny in the stars. The battle for Earth was about to reach its crescendo, and its outcome would define the future of humanity. The journey to the alien ship was fraught with tension. As the Resistance team's cloaked transport glided silently through the abandoned sectors of Megacity Delta, every shadow seemed to conceal unseen threats. The closer they got to the alien ship, the heavier the air felt charged with a silent, oppressive expectation. Inside the transport, Elias reviewed the mission parameters one last time with his team. Their objective was clear, but daunting. Infiltrate the alien command center located deep within the ship, disable its operational capabilities, and gather any intelligence on future invasion plans. The ship itself was a labyrinth of unknown technologies and potentially hostile alien sentries, which made their mission perilous. The team disembarked at a pre-scouted entry point, a less guarded underbelly of the ship where the hull met the city ruins. Thanks to Valkyrie's hacking prowess, they bypassed the initial security measures, gaining access to what appeared to be a maintenance corridor. The walls pulsed with a strange bioluminescence, casting eerie lights on their path. The corridor stretched ahead, descending into the bowels of the ship. Mikael led the way, his military training evident in his every cautious step. The group communicated through subvocal mics keeping their presence as unobtrusive as possible. Every few meters, they encountered alien technology that was completely foreign. Control panels with undecipherable interfaces, strange machinery whose purposes were a mystery, and the ever-present hum of a power source that felt both electric and alive. 
As they ventured deeper, they stumbled upon a surveillance hub, a nerve center filled with holographic displays showing various parts of the ship and, disturbingly, different locations on Earth. It was here that they realized the extent of the alien surveillance network. Every rebellion, every movement against them, was being monitored. Dr. Kovich, utilizing a portable hacking device, managed to download critical data from the hub. However, their intrusion did not go unnoticed. An alarm blared, a shrill, unfamiliar sound that immediately heightened their sense of danger. They had to move quickly now. The element of surprise was lost. The corridors became a maze, their complex layout designed to disorient and confuse. Alien sentries, beings of light and energy, started to converge on their location. The team fought back with energy weapons, which Dr. Kovic had modified to disrupt the aliens' corporeal forms. Each encounter was brief yet intense, pushing the team to their physical and mental limits. After what felt like hours, they reached the core of the command center. It was a vast chamber dominated by a massive structure that pulsed with light. A central processing unit, perhaps, or a power generator. Around it, alien creatures worked in unison, seemingly unaware or indifferent to the human intruders. Elias and the team set up explosive devices designed specifically to disrupt the alien technology without causing a catastrophic reaction that could destroy the city below. As they activated the timers, the reality of their situation hit them. There was no guarantee they would make it out alive. With the charges set, the team retraced their steps, encountering resistance that grew fiercer as they neared the exit. Just as they reached the maintenance corridor, a massive energy surge rolled through the ship, a precursor to the explosion. They sprinted, the exit barely in sight as the first device detonated, shaking the structure violently. The explosion triggered a chain reaction. Systems throughout the ship began to fail, lights flickering out, leaving only the emergency bioluminescence to guide them. They emerged from the ship just as the final charges went off, obliterating the command center and sending shockwaves through the alien ranks. As they collapsed, exhausted and injured but alive, outside the ship, they saw the fruits of their labor. The ship, a symbol of oppression and fear, was now dark, its once vibrant lights smothered by smoke and debris. Around them, the city seemed to awaken, as if from a long slumber, people pouring into the streets, looking up at the sky with a mixture of fear, confusion, and hope. Elias knew this was only the beginning. The ship might be disabled, but the alien presence on Earth was not eradicated. Yet this victory was a message, a declaration that humanity would not go quietly into the night. As the dawn broke over Mega City Delta, the Resistance prepared for the next phase of their struggle, knowing that the path to freedom was long and fraught with peril. But for now, they had won a crucial battle in the war for Earth's future. In the aftermath of the daring attack on the Alien Command Center, the landscape of the Resistance changed dramatically. With the primary alien ship incapacitated, a wave of rebellious fervor swept across the globe. Elias Gray, once an unknown systems architect, became a symbol of human resilience and defiance. However, the victory at Mega City Delta was not without its costs. The team suffered injuries, and the strain on their resources was immense. Yet, the success provided something invaluable. Momentum. The resistance, now operating under the banner of Terra Firma, expanded exponentially. Cells formed in other megacities, each coordinating their efforts through a patchwork network maintained by Valkyrie. The AI had evolved beyond its initial programming, becoming an indispensable ally processing strategies, predicting enemy movements, and securing communications. Despite their triumph, Elias knew that the alien threat was far from neutralized. Intelligence gathered from the destroyed command center revealed a disturbing truth. The alien ship was but one of many, a scout in a much larger invasion force lurking beyond the edges of the solar system. The real battle, it seemed, was yet to come. Elias and his leadership council, which now included Dr. Kovic and Mikhail, convened to strategize their next steps. They needed to prepare Earth's defenses and possibly take the fight beyond their own skies. Dr. Kovic's biodrones were already proving effective in cleansing the atmosphere of the alien terraforming agents, slowly reversing some of the ecological damage. Meanwhile, Mikhail's network thwarted several attempts by alien sympathizers and collaborators who sought to undermine their efforts. One of their most audacious plans was the construction of an orbital defense platform, dubbed Guardian. It was a massive undertaking, requiring resources and manpower from across multiple global sectors. 
The idea was to build a station capable of defending Earth against further alien incursions, and, if necessary, acting as a staging ground for counterattacks. The project, however, drew the attention of not just alien forces, but also rival human factions that viewed the rising power of terra firma with suspicion and envy. Old geopolitical rivalries began to surface, threatening the unity Elias had fought so hard to build. It was during one heated debate that Elias stood up and addressed the gathered leaders. We stand at the precipice of extinction or evolution. Our enemy does not discriminate by nation or ideology, neither can we. If we are to survive, our allegiance must be to Earth first and foremost, Elias implored, his voice resonant in the silent assembly. Moved by his words, the factions tentatively agreed to contribute to the Guardian project, recognizing that their petty disputes would mean little if the alien forces were to succeed in their colonization efforts. As Guardian's construction progressed, Terra Firma also worked to integrate alien technology salvaged from the wreckage of the command center. This technology offered leaps in energy production, propulsion, and weaponry, but it also came with risks. The alien tech was often booby-trapped or had safeguard mechanisms that made integration a dangerous task. Amidst these developments, an unexpected ally emerged from the shadows. A faction of the aliens, dissenters from their own ranks, reached out to Elias. They opposed the invasion, viewing it as a violation of their ethical codes. These rebels provided crucial insights into the weaknesses of the alien forces and offered a potential alliance that could tip the scales in the upcoming conflict. With this new alliance and the nearing completion of Guardian, the Resistance's spirits were high. They were no longer fighting a defensive war. They were preparing to go on the offensive. However, just as preparations reached their peak, Valkyrie detected a massive energy spike from the edge of the solar system. The invasion force had begun its approach, faster and perhaps more formidable than predicted. As Terra Firma rallied its forces, both human and alien, Elias looked out over the bustling command center a mix of determination and worry on his face. The coming battle would determine the fate of Earth and possibly set the stage for a new era of human existence. He knew the odds were still against them, but the resistance had already achieved the impossible once. Now, they needed to do it again, not just to survive, but to secure their future among the stars. The stage was set for humanity's greatest test, and the echoes of their resolve reverberated through the hearts of every man, woman, and child ready to fight for their home.